So today we're going to talk about desktop solo Bitcoin lottery mining. I know that's a mouthful. We'll get into all the specifics and technicalities and what that all means. I've actually made a few videos about this in the past, but since then my setup has changed a little bit and I'm excited. So we'll dig into all the details and odds and how this all works. But first, here's a little tour of my Bitcoin mining setup here. So starting with this little guy here, this is a Bitax Gamma 602. Really haven't done much to modify this. It came pre-modified from the place I bought it from uh, with this dark horse heat sink to keep it a little cooler. Also added these copper heat sinks. Don't pay attention to the one on the left. That's on the Wi-Fi module and it's completely useless. It looks cool though. This thing gets one and a half terahashes a second and it was $109. The one next to it is a Nerd QX++. Now I've done a few mods to this one. I really like this one. It was $400. It gets about six and a half to seven terahashes per second. And I've done a few modifications. So I added a larger fan to the front. I have a 3D printed shroud, which you can kind of see right here. Uh, there we go. And I also added a fan to the back. Now I really like the fact that this one has a colorful LCD screen. Uh, it shows me the Bitcoin price and automatically updates that. It actually just hit $123,000. But you can toggle through the settings here and you can see all kinds of good stuff. Like you can see global stats, you can see your speed and device, you know, information like temp and all that. Uh, you can also get the pool information, all that's right there. So pretty cool. And if you want, you can also just shut it off. If you have this thing like next to your bed or something like that and you need to get to sleep, uh, that's always an option. And then if we move into here, this is my laundry room slash Bitcoin mining facility. This is my Avalon Q. Now this thing gets 96 terahashes a second. It's got three different modes, uh, but in super mode, which is in right now, it gets 96. So I got this whole cooling situation set up for this thing, but I'm still waiting on a 3D printed shroud that goes right on the back there. And then I'll get these things all connected. But for now, I have this uh, old garage fan. You can see like the rust in the front, uh, keeping it nice and cool. You don't need an extra fan. I just, you know, this thing gets really hot and this helps to kind of disperse the heat out of the laundry room here. And it just keeps the device a little bit cooler. But once we have this thing all set up, uh, this will really help to keep this thing nice and cool. And it will actually go right out of the dryer vent, uh, which is kind of neat. So anyway, that's my current setup. Okay, so that's my little setup as of right now. It continues to grow, and I imagine in another month, uh, it's going to grow some more because next month, there's an exciting new release. Actually, I guess some people already have them, but I can't get one until November. And so we'll talk about that when the time arrives, but that'll be a little surprise, I guess, for a later video. But here's the deal. Here's what these things are doing. There are a few different kinds of Bitcoin mining, and there's a lot of confusion here because anytime I post this stuff online, people post things and they say stuff like, you're gonna make two cents a day, you're gonna waste more in electricity than you're gonna make, and blah, 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 blah. And they're technically partially correct in a way. Here's why. So sometimes the way it works with Bitcoin mining is you join a pool, and so you're joining a pool with a bunch of other miners, you're combining the power and then when you find a block, you get a small portion of that block reward based on your contribution to the pool. So let's say there's 10 of us and we're all contributing 10 petahashes or something. And we solve a block. It would get equally split between all 10 of us. Now that's never really how it works because you have all different types of mining setups and you have all different types of miners. Some people with 100 petahashes, some people with one terahash, which is far less. And so it gets split up based on the contribution to the pool. Now there's another way to do it called solo mining. Now, instead of teaming up with a bunch of other miners, you are solo mining all by yourself, trying to solve a block and trying to get the reward. Now, if you get the reward, the payout is high. So instead of those few dollars that you're going to make every single day, you're looking for that huge block reward and, uh, and that big cash or crypto payout. For instance, the Bitcoin block reward is worth about 3.125 Bitcoins. Right now, that's worth somewhere in the neighborhood of $385,000. And it's difficult to happen. It's difficult to make it happen. You really need some power or some luck. Uh, but it is very possible. I wouldn't say very, but it is possible to 
solve a block with a very small desktop miner uh, mining setup, basically. But the odds are not on your side. You're going to need some serious luck. And that's why they often refer to it as lottery mining. So solo because you do it by yourself. Lottery because your odds are pretty low, quite frankly. So let's take a look at how this all sort of breaks down. So the two small miners I showed, the Bitaxe Gamma and the NerdQX++, those two have a combined hash rate of about 7.7 .7 terahashes per second. It goes up and down a little bit. Sometimes it's as high as 8, sometimes it's as low as like 6.2, but on average I'd say 7.7 .7 is a pretty even range. It's generally how it works out. Um, you can also overclock, which means you can push a little bit more power out of your miners with some modifications, and you can bring it up to like 9. I don't do that for a couple of reasons. Number one, I want my devices to last as long as they can. And the harder you push them, it's like anything. More wear and tear on the device, you're not going to get as much life out of it. So I keep it just a little bit above uh, kind of those default settings. Try to squeeze a little bit more about, out of it uh, without just driving it into the ground. So with the Bitaxe Gamma getting about 1.5 and the NerdQX++ getting about 6.2, we're at about 7.7 .7 terahashes a second. Now, both of these miners are mining for Bitcoin. Right now, we have a 1 in 947,872 chance of hitting a Bitcoin block and making me $385,000. Again, lottery mining. Odds are not on my side. It's a 1 in a million chance. But it's possible... And that's why I like it. It's like buying a lottery ticket that you get to play all the time, 24 hours a day, uh, you know, for as long as the device lasts. And that's really where the enjoyment of these comes from. Would I recommend that someone like takes out a huge loan and buys a bunch of these small devices and tries to strike it rich? Probably not. But it is fun to check on it every day or check on it every hour. I have some apps on my phone. I'm able to just, you know, log in, check the status, see if we've solved any blocks and gotten any rewards. And I like that just ongoing excitement. That brings me joy. And for that reason, it's worth the money to me. Uh, but again, one in a million odds, not something that you can necessarily bank on, but it's fun to try. So that's what we're doing. Now with the bigger one, the Avalon Q, we are mining for Bitcoin Cash. Now with Bitcoin Cash, you have much better odds, but you have a lower payout. So right now, same block reward, 3.125 Bitcoin cash instead of Bitcoin. Uh, but instead of $385,000, you're going to get somewhere in the neighborhood of $1,800, depending on what it's trading at today. Now, with the Avalon Q all by itself, we have a 1 in 349 chance of solving a block today and getting that reward. So 1 in 350, that's a, you know almost $2,000. That would pay for pretty much all the devices that I've purchased so far, which would be great. And so... I'm making more of a serious attempt to, you know, solve a Bitcoin cash block because I think it's a little more feasible. And if I'm able to do that, then I have a return on my investment and essentially all these devices are free. When I do finally hit a Bitcoin cash block, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. So I'm either going to buy another miner and uh, leave one on Bitcoin cash all the time and try to continue to get Bitcoin cash blocks. I may switch this over to Bitcoin, but I imagine that I'm always going to have at least one of my devices pointed to Bitcoin Cash, not because I love Bitcoin Cash, but because again, better chance for a payout and it's nice to have it, you know, diversified between different coins. Now, if I were to switch the Avalon Q over to Bitcoin, let's check out what the odds are going to be. That's going to be a 1 in 76,000 chance per day of solving a block worth $385,000. Now, 1 in 76,000 chance is actually pretty decent. It's uh, a lot better than the smaller devices. You know, you have a 1 in 76,000 chance versus a 1 in a million chance, so much better odds, but you're still looking at a 1 in 70,000 chance. So maybe, maybe not. And so that's why for me, it makes more sense to have this device going for Bitcoin Cash right now. But you know, you can do whatever you want to do. Now, if I add all those devices together, we're looking at about 103. That pushes it to 1 in 70,000 odds. Or if I had them all going after Bitcoin Cash, that's 1 in 325 chance. So that's why a marginal improvement. But that's why I've got the little ones on Bitcoin. I got the big ones on Bitcoin Cash. And I plan to leave it that way for a while. We'll see how it goes. But that's basically the gist of it. So 
You set these things up, you connect them to the pool, and you just let them run 24 hours a day, and you let them try to work their magic. And then you're able to go over here to, this is the dashboard for, oh shoot, I'm so, showing stuff. Well, my wallet address, no big deal. Um, this shows you the dashboard for the Bidax Gamma. That's the smallest, the $109 version. And this just shows you what it's doing. I've got my power and my input voltage, my frequency. I've got my terahashes. I'm up to 1.5 1 right now, which is pretty average. Uh, it shows you kind of what's going on with that. So kind of the breakdown there. Very similar when you come over to the NerdQX++. These are very similar setups, but same type of information that you're able to get on here and take a look at and just see how it's doing. You know, you want to keep an eye on things like the temperature. You want to make sure you're not getting too hot. Generally, you're not going to as long as you can hear your fans running. Uh, but if you're somewhere else, like when I'm out and about, you know, I like to monitor the temperatures because I am able to shut down the device or, you know, reduce the voltage and, and do some other things from, my, uh, from the app. So some of that stuff is helpful just in case, you know, a fan happens to die while I'm out and about and all of a sudden the temperatures are starting to climb. Now, the nice thing about this is, is if it reaches a certain point. So right now the ASIC temperature is at 55 degrees Celsius. If it hits 69, the thing will automatically cut itself off to not self-destruct. So it's got some built-in mechanisms in place to make sure that it doesn't just, you know, burst into flames over here or something like that. So some of that stuff is good. The Avalon has a similar setup. Let's see. A little bit different layout, but same type of information. Right now, I'm at 94 terahashes per second. Shows I'm connected to the pool. Status on the right here. All this stuff is fine, looking good. It is mining away. So this is definitely the more serious of the three miners that I have. This thing has more of a shot of actually doing something. The other ones are a lot more of a lottery play. So those are the ones that we really need some luck on. This one, you know, you're looking at a 1 in 350 chance. That means you're going to do one at least, you know, one block a year of Bitcoin cash, mathematically. Hopefully we're going to do more than that because you're going to sprinkle a little magic and a little luck into the mix. And so we'll see how all that goes. But... You know, guaranteed at least one. Hopefully it's today. You know, I check these things constantly. I wake up, the first thing I do in the morning is, did I, did I solve a block? Did we get a block reward? Uh, and so far, I have not. However, I've only been at this for a little while, so that's pretty normal. I do know a guy who bought an Avalon Nano S. That was a $300 device, and he did find a Bitcoin cash block within two weeks of being connected to the Via BTC pool. So that was pretty cool, and it just goes to show you that, again, there's a lot of luck involved in this stuff. Last but not least, the two small devices are open source, which means anybody with some technical know-how in a manufacturing facility in China or Europe or the United States or anywhere, they can make their own versions of this. So they're not all created equal. There are good ones, there are bad ones. There are some that are made of cheap, the cheapest Chinese parts they can possibly find and made by people who don't know or care about these things. And there are others that are made by experts, people who are solo Bitcoin miners themselves. They source the best parts. They make sure they're assembled correctly. They test them all before they send them out. And they offer warranty on their products. I will include a link uh, in my description below to my favorite vendor, which is Solo Satoshi. They sell both the Bitax Gamma 602 and the NerdQX++. That's where I got both of mine. I love those guys. They are enthusiasts, to say the least. Again, they test all their stuff. It's all built in Texas, which is cool. And if for some reason there's an issue, there's a 90-day warranty on all their products. But even beyond that 90-day warranty, if you have any questions, if something's not right, if you're having some sort of technical issue, they'll answer your response, or they'll respond to you, rather, provide you a response anytime. Uh, they even respond at nighttime. I sent them a quick question at like 10 o'clock at night, and by like 10, 15, boom, I had a response. So those guys are great. Uh, there are also some other good vendors as well, but I think Solo Satoshi is one of the best. When you get to the Avalon Q, that is not open source. So there's only one company making it. So unlike the small ones, just look for the best deal. You know, I would try to find somebody reputable, find somebody who's going to provide some sort of, you know, level of service if you need it. Um, but those things do come with their own factory one-year warranty. I don't know if I mentioned the price on that thing, by the way. That thing cost me $1,800 shipped. So it was, you know, more than four times the cost of my medium priced uh, <laughs> Avalon or uh, Nerd QX++. Again, that one was 400 and it's, uh, you know, 18 times the price of a Bitax Gamma. So if you're just getting into this, get yourself a Gamma and give it a shot. Uh, if you want to, you know, 
stack up your odds a little bit. You can always buy two gammas or one Nerd QX plus plus. The Nerd QX plus plus is probably one of my favorite desktop miners of all time. There's so many cool mods for it. There's a lot of 3D printed parts, be it cases or shrouds for adapting you know, larger fans. Uh, there are all sorts of cool things for it. And both of the small ones have this total cult following. People absolutely love them. They do all these crazy upgrades and mods. Uh, there's huge communities based around talking about them and talking about you know the whole hobby of Bitcoin solo lottery mining, and uh, it's a lot of fun. I actually I really enjoy it. You know this is one of those things that kind of gets you hooked, and for good reason. You know when people can, can say to themselves, "I bought this $400 thing," and maybe when I wake up in the morning, it made me $385,000. That's exciting for a lot of people in the same way that playing the lottery is, but. If you go buy a Powerball ticket, which is a very popular lottery here in the United States, your odds are 1 in 292 million. So your odds are extremely low of winning. But people enjoy it because they go and they buy their tickets, you know, and they buy them after work at 5 p.m. And from 5 p.m. until the time they draw the numbers at 11 p.m., you've got this six-hour window where you can kind of dream about all the things that you would do if you won. And so... You know, people will pick out houses and think, ah, oh, buy this car and that car and do this and do that. And that's exciting for people. It's really that window of excitement rather than, you know, really hoping they're going to win. Because most people know the odds are terrible. Your shot at winning is very low. Uh, but you do have that six, you know, hour window where you're able to dream. With these things, you're granted a 24-hour window, 365 days a year to think, what would I do if I wake up in the morning or I check my phone right now and this thing solved a block and I have 385,000 extra dollars? Maybe you would buy yourself a Lamborghini. Maybe you would pay off a house. Maybe you would be smart and invest the money wisely. I don't know. You could do whatever you want. But that's the fun of it because, you know, at a moment, your life could change. Now, if you're a millionaire or a billionaire, $385,000 probably means nothing to you, let's be honest. But for most of us, $385,000 would be a pretty nice windfall. It would really change things up. So that's pretty much all this stuff in a nutshell. I'm really into it. I'm making a lot of videos about it lately. Again, I really enjoy it. It's fun. It's a, it's a very low cost hobby to get involved with. However, it's addicting. And if you spend a hundred bucks and get yourself a Bidax Gamma, give yourself a couple of weeks, you're going to want to probably upgrade to uh, a Nerd QX++ and add that to your little mini miner farm. And the next thing you know, you'll be on, you know, the internet at two o'clock in the morning like i was buying yourself an avalon q and then who knows where we go from there do we buy a whole house full of miners do we have an electricity bill that's like three thousand dollars a month i don't know i don't know uh, i'll touch on that too last thing i'll end on this so as far as electricity consumption goes the 100 dollars model the bit x gamma that thing uses 25 watts so less than like a very small light bulb uh, the Nerd QX++ is right now using about 100 and, let's see, let's take a look exactly, 108 watts, so a larger light bulb. The Avalon is on super mode, there are three modes, and it's currently using 1760 watts. So that's when you start getting into, okay, I have to watch, you know, how long I'm running it on super mode. I got to make sure I actually solve a block because my electricity costs now are going to start to increase. But with the two small ones, it's as simple as like, you know, having an extra light on in your house. It's not going to make a difference in your electric bill. And that's why they're cool and that's why they're accessible because they're efficient, they're easy to set up, and they're lots of fun. So if you have any questions about these devices, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to answer for you. Uh, also, you can send me a message up here on Instagram.